You gonna try it? <laughs> this corn on the cob is nothing to write home about. And this one, well, at least we got corn on it. It's a little small, but it'll be delicious. But this one, this one that looks like some sort of mutation from a different planet, well, this one we're excited about. Guten yardening, everybody. If this is the first time you're seeing this or learning about what this is, I'm not actually that surprised. We had to look it up ourselves because even though I had seen this when I was younger in my grandmother's garden, I thought it was something harmful. Uh, it actually, it <laughs> looks like a really bad mutation that could um, contain insects or something like that. And so we were a little bit more afraid of it than anything else. So we looked this up. And so what we found is here in the US, this is pretty rare. This is called Huitlacoche and it's a fungus. It's a fungus that is edible. So it's not a mushroom, but it shares that, uh, I guess, characteristic with mushrooms and that it's edible. So some things you should know, typically you won't find this in the US because our sweet corn farmers try to avoid this at all costs. They spray fungicides because when they get this sweet lacoche growing, it really impacts their yields. And so they don't want that. But in other cultures like Mexico, for example, where this is considered a delicacy, you could find this in many more major markets. You might also be able to find this in some organic stores here. Uh, we haven't really looked to see. The taste of this is supposed to be kind of a smoky, sweet taste if it's harvested at the right time. So you can see on the front here that some of these galls, and these are little galls here. Actually, I can pull this one up. This is a single kernel gall. But some of these galls have exploded, and inside there's this sort of chalky black um, fungus. So these are the spores inside. You don't want to eat this once these are opened up and you get that chalky substance. Instead, you're looking for the pieces that are nice and dark like this, uh, but still have that silky kind of feel to it. And what's inside is going to be this inky-like substance. Um, and what we've read is, and, and we've, we've never tried this before, this is gonna be our very first time trying it, so we're really excited about that. But what we've read is that this, like squid ink, for example, will color the whole dish that you're making. And so what we're gonna make with this is something that this is commonly used for, and that is tacos. A apparently, and if you have a recipe that you use, we we'd love to learn more about it, um, since this is our first time trying it. But apparently this is also really good to flavor soups, like uh, tortilla soups, and so on. Some cool things about this sweet lacoche though. It is an excellent source of a lot of vitamins and minerals, much more so than a standard ear of corn, which I think is pretty fascinating. It's got more carbohydrates, proteins, uh, healthy fats, and it also has an amino acid called lysine, which is something that some vegetarians, when, when they are deficient in, it causes some problems. And so this is excellent if you're a vegetarian as well. So take a look at that. And you, oh, you should know this too. Most of the galls, most of these little pockets that we have on ours are between an inch to two inches uh, in size. Some of them are a lot smaller, uh, but they can grow in diameter up to almost a foot. I'd love to see that. I think that that's gotta be incredible. You can also see it's making my hands really black here. So you can see what I'm talking about, about this inkiness. So we've never tried it before, but today, is going to be our first. So Huilacoche is a fungus that forms for a couple of different reasons. It often forms on unpollinated silk of corn, so that could be our case here, but I think what's more likely our case is that this also forms frequently when there's a ton of rain which creates really rapid growth or a bunch of wind damage. And the wind damage can really open up uh, places or wounds, I guess you could say, where this fungus can take hold. This is one of those cool aspects of gardening where you're learning something new, trying something new, discovering something new that we've never done before. So we're not necessarily suggesting that you go out 
and <laughs> try to grow Huitlacoche, though you can. According to our research, if you've ever wondered, can you just try to grow this? There are ways of dipping uh, the silks into Huitlacoche spores and trying to let them grow, but we're going to try something new today. And again, that's part of the experience of gardening, the fun experience of gardening. Trying to avoid these spores that have already burst open <laughs> as best I can. Woo, look at that. If we had known what we were looking for early on, we could have harvested these before they burst open. Oh, there it is. Check that out. See, see that see that wet inkiness? That's what we're talking about. That wet inkiness. Like that one's it. All right, this is our Huitlacoche harvest. Not that big, but it's gonna be plenty to try to make a couple of really small tacos. <laughs> now this isn't gonna be a traditional taco by any stretch. We have hard shell tacos instead of corn tortillas, which is what I would prefer. But here's our Huitlacoche, and then we have some green pepper, onion, two different colors of tomato, and then a little bit of jalapeno, all of this from the garden. So everything we have here from the garden, the only thing that won't be, will be our hard taco shells. So we're gonna put this into a little bit of oil to get it to fry down. We'll let this go for a couple minutes. All right, just let everything cook down for a few more minutes. You notice I didn't go overboard with any of the seasonings here, and that's because I really want to taste what this sweet lacoche actually tastes like. I don't want to cover it with anything else. So you can see some of the black coloration here, but this is going to be the filling for our taco. Just like this, we're going to load it over. Our finished taco looking absolutely delicious. And all from the garden. I mean, that's, it's gonna be good no matter what, I'm confident. It's so nice out that after the, I don't know, seven, eight minutes that this took to cook, we had to bring it back outside to enjoy it on our patio, right by where we harvested half of the peppers and the tomatoes for this. So this is our first taste. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna try a piece by itself first to get a feel for the taste. And then I'm gonna try it with the rest of the taco. So here is, our first piece cooked down. It takes a little bit, but then there's that little corn aspect. I'm really tasting a lot of the pepper, like the, it's not hot pepper, but the green bell pepper in this, but it's, it's, it's good. Even that piece was a little bit bitter. I could, I, I know what they're talking about now with that bitterishness, but that was still really good. I'm gonna try a bite with everything in it now. Let's see, let's see what happens. All right, here we go. Oh man. I probably have black stuff all over my face. <laughs> that is so good. I really wasn't sure about this one. When other people say, oh, it's delicious, it's a delicacy. I mean, you saw what it looks like, but this is absolutely amazing. And it's really simple. And once again, every single thing in here, except for the oil that I cooked it in and this corn hard shell toward, uh, taco is from our garden. Now I'm gonna convince the rest of my family to try this because it is worth it. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you learned something today about a product from our garden that we didn't even know about before today. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, leave us a comment, and let us know how you enjoy your Huitlacoche. And as always, remember, 
when you're with us, you're good to grow. Oh man. You gonna try it?